As we gather together today, we remember that we are not alone in our faith. As Jesus says at the end of Matthew's gospel, I am with you always. Though the way is not easy, I am with you always. We may suffer, we may be filled with anger, I am with you always. Our hearts may be full of questions and doubts and worries. I am with you always. Grief may crush our spirits. I am with you always. And through it all, we are together as we remember that Jesus says to us, I am with you always. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain, to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And teaching them. To obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, till the end of the age. Go. 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 Go, go, go. Go into all the world. So this is the last Sunday of Easter season. And I wanted to spend time on the last paragraph of the Gospel of Matthew. And it occurs right after the story we heard on Easter morning. If you remember in that story, two women were in the tomb and they encountered an angel who said to them, he is not here, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. When they left, in joy and fear, they ran into Jesus, and Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Now tell my brothers that I'm going to meet them in Galilee. That's where they'll see me. And then our story begins. So the disciples left for Galilee, and on the top of the mountain, they encountered Jesus. Jesus was on mountains a lot. If you remember the stories, 
We have Jesus, especially in Matthew's Gospel, from chapter 5 to 7, preaching on the mountain. He preaches to us the Sermon on the Mount, where he teaches us about what it means to be blessed, he teaches us about prayer and fasting and money. He teaches us about love and forgiveness. He shares with us how we should live life together in community. Jesus also prayed on the mountain. After one encounter where he had fed 5,000 people, the disciples hop in a boat and he goes up to the mountain to pray. Jesus was transfigured on the mountain. In other words, Jesus spent a time on the mountain, and when he was on the mountain and the disciples that saw him experienced and felt God within him. And so here we are on another mountaintop. The disciples saw him, worshipped him, and doubted him. Saw, worshipped, and doubted. The word doubt is used one other time in the Gospel of Matthew. And it happens after that story where Jesus prays on the mountain. So Jesus was with a big crowd of people and he had compassion on them. He looked on them with love and saw that they were hungry and said to the disciples, you feed them. And after everyone had been fed, the disciples get in a boat, and Jesus heads up to the mountain to pray. And in that boat with the disciples, a storm comes up on the lake, and the waves are battering the boat. All night long, the disciples are huddled together in fear in that boat. And Jesus comes walking toward them in the early morning. And the disciples think a ghost is coming to them. They don't recognize Jesus. And then Jesus tells them, don't be afraid. And Peter says, if it's really you on the water, if it is really you, Jesus, tell me to come out to you. And so Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out of the boat, walks on the water, and he's doing great. He's making his way to Jesus. There are no problems. And then the wind whips up, and a little bit of that water hits him. And all of a sudden, he is sinking. He is going down in that water. He's frightened. And he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus reaches out and catches him and says to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? See, worship, and doubt. The disciples had given their hearts to Jesus. They had spent the last years of their life with Jesus, all in. And then the unthinkable happens. That person you love and follow more than you can possibly imagine is arrested by the government and executed because of the things he preached. Because he dared to say you needed to love your enemies. He dared to preach that you needed to forgive, that you needed to act differently, that you needed to feed the poor, that you needed to take care of each other, that people needed to be healed. He dared to say those things. He dared to challenge the powers that be, and the powers fought back and killed him. And so the disciples... Loved him with all their hearts, followed him with all their hearts, till that moment at the end where it was too much. It was just too much. And so many of them, in that fear 
of what will happen to me. Will the government come and get me too if I preach love, if I speak out the way Jesus did? In that fear, they hid and ran. And so when they're there on the mountain, it says they see, worship, and doubt. In other words, they see Jesus, their eyes behold him, they know him. They know Jesus is there. And they worship him. They praise. They surround him with their hearts and their love. And they doubt. They gave to their hearts to Jesus, but their heads were getting in the way. With their heads, it didn't make sense. They had seen the body put in a tomb. In their heads, it didn't make sense. Part of them believed and worshipped, and another part of them didn't. They doubted and worshipped. And we often think that doubt and faith and doubt and worship can't go together, don't mix. They're mutually exclusive. That if you doubt any part of the scripture, any of the stories in the Bible, anything to do with faith, then you have to throw the faith aside. You have to throw the scriptures aside. You have to throw your love of Jesus aside because this didn't make sense in my head. But this scripture passage is telling us that doubt and worship, doubt and faith can be together. It reminded me of do you remember when we were doing this God is Still Speaking campaign and they had all these posters? And on one of the posters, they used to write a phrase, your doubts and questions are always welcome. Do you have doubts? So do we. We, the United Church of Christ, talk about our doubts and our faith. We believe God is everywhere, even within our doubts and our questions. No matter who you are or where you are on your faith journey, you and your doubts are welcome. I think that's an important, powerful message. And a message that's here at the very end of the gospel when Jesus is telling them, go out into the world baptizing and proclaim the good news. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Go out to the ends of the earth. Go out into the world. As he's telling them that, he isn't asking them to release their doubts, their questions, their worries. He isn't asking them to let go of their head and just follow their heart. He's letting them know that it's okay. That the doubts are okay. That questions are okay. That it doesn't have to be an either or. It can be a both and question. We worship and we doubt. As Michael March says, doubt recognizes that the experience is greater than the words can express. That our doubt is sometimes there because we can't figure out how that could happen. Our mind can't make sense of it. We can't comprehend what we've experienced in our encounter with God. We doubt. We doubt and we question. 
And it's in those moments, those moments where we doubt and question, that maybe we're meant to hear the very last words in Matthew's gospel. The words that say, I am with you always. In your seeing, when you've encountered God, when you've experienced the holy, where the divine has come to you, I am with you always in your worship. In that moment of praise where you could not help but stop and experience God in your worship, I am with you always. In those quiet times of prayer and reflection, in the study of the gospel, in the praise of God, I am with you always. And in your doubts, in your doubts and in your questions, in those things that your head gets stuck up that you can't make sense of, in your doubts, I am with you always. Jesus, at the end of Matthew, promises that I am with you always. No matter where you are in the world, no matter where you are on your journey, no matter how many questions and concerns and doubts, no matter how much pain, no matter how much sorrow and anxiety, no matter what is going on in your head, I am with you always. I am with you always in your seeing. I am with you always in your worship. I am with you always in your doubts. I am with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, you invite us to go, but we have to stay. You invite us to go and we want to go. Oh, how we wish we could go. But we have to stay. You invite us to go and we want to go. We want to go to work and to the movies and to our favorite restaurant, and to the art museum, and to the botanical gardens, and to the national parks. We want to go, and we have to stay. You invite us to go, and we want to go anywhere, everywhere, but we have to stay here, safe, secure. And here we stop to pray for those without a job, without food, without a home. We stop to pray for those who have died fighting wars or been de by being deployed in military service. We stop to pray for the ill, the disheartened, the lonely. We stop to grieve with all those who are mourning. And we hear your words of promise. I will be with you always. I will be with you always. Even when we want to go and can't. Even when we have to stay here. We hear you say back to us, I will be with you always. And so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is our moment in worship where we stop to give back from what we have been blessed with. We stop to give to the church that the church may continue to be a light, may continue to be hope, may continue to show people that God is always with them. Amen.